Southampton paid Wolves that six-figure fee for Tim Flowers last May as the deputy and eventual successor to England's Peter Shilton. Well, Swindon have obtained Flowers today on loan because of Fraser Digby's suspension for their next two matches, starting against Bolton Wanderers at the county ground tomorrow. Mind you, Tim Flowers has not had an easy time uh, at Southampton. Peter Shilton's such a super superbly consistent goalkeeper that the 20-year-old Flowers only gets in occasionally when the great man is injured. And when Flowers has played, the opposition have certainly excelled, as in this occasion. Let's hope that Swindon's defence tomorrow night gives young Flowers more cover than Southampton gave him up there in Manchester. Well, now Swindon, the team looking the promotion part of no doubts at all, not least through winning on Saturday, when for a long time they failed to score against struggling Fulham. But when Swindon did score, what lovely goals we were to see. Well, Swindon constantly attacked, but uh, Fulham's goalkeeper, Johnny Vaughan, was really enjoying his week down in the West Country. Remember, he had denied Bristol Rovers any goals last Wednesday, and on Saturday again, for a long time, everything was going Johnny Vaughan's way. Fulham's goalkeeper, incidentally, had loan spells with both of the Bristol clubs last season, and he was enjoying his second game in a week when those vital breaks of the ball were all working out well for him and badly for the West Country side. So it became an anxious time for the Swindon crowd and their manager Lou Macari against a, a team that they really knew they ought to beat. And Fulham had the occasional chance like that one. But fortunately for Swindon, Chris Pike couldn't fish that one properly. Well, Swindon attacked constantly and Vaughan was to show that not only was he lucky, but he was very talented indeed when he had to be. Super save there. But finally Swindon got their act together after an hour. Barnard's long throw, Bamba uses his height, Jimmy Quinn's volley. A lovely one for the Northern Ireland International, named in their squad for next week's game today. So Swindon will be postponing next week's match. And what about his second goal? An even better one from Jimmy Quinn. There it is. First timer. Certainly a wonderful way for Jimmy Quinn, the Northern Ireland International, to mark St. Patrick's Week. Well, Irish eyes have to be smiling after two good goals like that. Yes, uh... I was well pleased with two goals. Uh, as, a, as the match went on, second half, it looked like it was going to be a draw more and more. And uh, we just lucky enough. I was lucky enough to put the two goals in the net and uh, we got the points again. What do you remember of the first goal? And uh, with the pitch being very bumpy as it was today, I just seen the ball come across and I just had to get on the end of it uh, and volley it straight away. So not a day to dwell on the ball. Well, you certainly didn't dwell on it for the second. No, the, the ball came up and I just turned and hit it and lucky enough it went in the net. It's just uh, one of those those things you just keep your eye on the ball and uh, just aim to get a good strike on it and I was lucky enough to do that. Lou, for an hour before the first goal, it looked like one of those awful days when you're on top but can't win. What did you see as the problems in the first hour? I think those awful days are going to happen to any team that's up near the top uh, and playing a team from lower down. I mean, as it's proved today at um, Bristol Rovers, they went and beat Wigan. I think you were there the other evening and, and watching Rovers, I mean, you wouldn't consider they could have beaten Wigan. But there's a lot of pressure on you when, um, when you're playing at home, more so on our lads at the moment, I think because they're expected to win games and win them comfortable. And I don't think that happens in, in league football nowadays. You've got no right to score goals. Um, goals are the hardest things to get. And I felt today we were under a lot of pressure before we started. Um, actually, you put us under a bit of pressure on Friday night. I mean, you were having three goals for Quinn, three for White and three for Bamba. Um, Roger, you should know it doesn't happen like that. Sorry, Lou, I didn't actually say nine goals, just by plenty, but pleased you're all looking in and watching us, keeping an eye on us. Wish you well tomorrow. Good Adding pitch. another three points to those they picked up on Saturday against Fulham. Swindon are fourth in the table and, of course, have three games in hand. If they won all of them, they'd go top. Today, Swindon signed a replacement for their goalkeeper, Fraser Digby, who begins a two-match suspension tomorrow night. The new man is Southampton reserve keeper Tim Flowers, who plays second fiddle to Peter Shilton at the Dell. The other piece of good news for Swindon is the selection of Jimmy Quinn for the Northern Ireland squad to play England in the European Championship qualifier next week. As a result, Swindon have postponed their game against Chester City on Wednesday the 1st of April. On Saturday, though, Swindon didn't play at their best despite the result. Jimmy Quinn looked threatening from the start, but Swindon rarely got close to goal. Tight Fulham defence and silly Swindon mistakes saw to that. This time, Quinn down the left, 
He passes inside to Mark Jones, but even with the help of a deflection, it poses no problems to John Vaughan in the Fulham goal. With more optimism than real purpose, Swindon pressed forward. This time the ball fell for Steve White, but Sean Gore was there to head away an otherwise certain goal. This time White passes out to Peter Coyne, but his shot is hampered by the defence and parried by the keeper. In the second half, Swindon still looked the more likely to score. Here, White and Coyne combined to miss, but then, ten minutes into the half, out of the blue, a thunderbolt from Jimmy Quinn. Half an hour later, he did it again, with his back to goal, outside the area, and it's one of the best goals of the season. So a dull game, but two spectacular goals, and the all-important three points to Swindon.